started. And if we can, Melanie, can you close that door for us? Sure. And I personally like intimate settings like these. I think they're amazing. Um, make sure that you put your name, um, sign your name on the back. Um, we are giving um, credit, one hour credit to providers. Um, if you are a family member, just state that you're a family member or self-advocate, self that's fine as well. Um, I did hand out, uh, and my name is Katrina Washington, and I'm with the state office in Tallahassee by way of Pensacola is where I work from, but I'm out of the Tallahassee office. So it's a pleasure to be here to work with you. I mentioned to the other session earlier, I'm the operations review specialist, and my boss is Megan Murray, who is amazing, and um, we work on supported employment. Our goal is to get as many people as possible that are linked with APD employed, whether it be on the wait list, whether it be on med waiver, the goal is to make sure that individuals are employed. If not employed, at least they know the option is out there. Do you guys agree on that? Because I think a lot of times, you know, people don't know what's out there. They don't know what to or what not to expect. So this particular training is called Finding Employment and Employees. And I gave out brochures to all of you whether you're a provider or a family member. And these are brochures that we've been giving out and we've updated them. Um, and Melanie Edders is in the back, so let's give them a hand because they worked on printing all of these out and getting things situated and working on the edits that we edited. Um, but when you look at um, what to expect from your job coach, it gives you information on what supported employment is, what you can expect from the job coach, and what the expectation is, expectations are, for the person that's getting supported employment as well. So this is a very good one to share with individuals that aren't, you can have this in just a second. Um, but yes, so it's a good tool to look at to determine whether or not you, you know, you're interested in supported employment. Another one um, is hiring employees with disabilities. It's good for your business. So it gives information on uh, what supported employment is again and how we can help Companies diversify their workplace. What do you think when we say, I'm just going to throw that out there, it's not a part of the presentation. When you think about diversifying your workforce, what do you think of? What comes to mind to you guys? If, don't all raise your hand at one time. When, if you diversify, what does that mean? Yes. The main thing, the most awesome workplace to me is when it's different. You know, when um, you're able to see, imagine if everybody looked alike, wouldn't it be a boring world? Yeah? Okay, so finding employment and employees is what we're gonna discuss. And these, uh, the agency supports persons with developmental disabilities in living, learning, and working in their communities. And we, um, we provide services for individuals with autism. They must meet the guidelines. Each one cerebral palsy, spinal bifida, intellectual disabilities, Down syndrome, Prader Willi syndrome, Ewan <laughs> McDermott syndrome, and children ages three to five who are at high risk of a developmental disability. One thing that we're gonna talk about today is challenging yourself. And what we mean by that is, <clears throat> The only way I think that we can get people successfully employed and have successful outcomes is for us to push to challenge others as we challenge ourselves. So if it's a person with a disability, they need to be challenged, but providers need to be challenged too, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. How do we challenge ourselves? In employment, for those getting jobs that were probably told that they'd never have one, um, for um, to have diversity and inclusion, not just on a job, but just in the community in general. And lastly, with self-advocacy, pushing for others to speak for themselves and be able to fight for themselves. And how do we do that? By working with them and showing them the way. I shared with someone prior to coming in here, I have a nephew that is 28 years old. He'll be 29 in September. My nephew was diagnosed um, with cerebral palsy, okay? Um, weighed like a pound and a half. They didn't think that he would make it. Had five or six different surgeries. He used a wheelchair from time to time as a toddler and walked a little bit later in life. Now he's walking well, by the way. But at the time, we were not educated like you guys are about disabilities. He's 28. That was 28 years ago. 
but he was never treated any differently from anyone in the family. If everybody else was disciplined, so was he. Am I making sense? My brother was a basketball coach, so what my brother did, his name is Frederick, by the way, he wouldn't mind me telling you. My brother um, is his son. He was a coach at a high school. Guess what, Frederick played on the high school team. The bas he didn't start, but he played. Make sense? So needless to say, I say to you now, Frederick finished seminary school, and now he's a minister. So, but nobody ever thought, you know, anything different. And I think when we take that approach as a whole with a little bit of help as needed, that we're able to strengthen and help diversify, not just our families, but diversify the workforce as well. So I really offer and push for all of you to challenge yourselves. Now let's look at some real facts and numbers on that screen. Look at 34, you guys, 0.4% of individuals with disabilities are working. About 75.4, I think we had 80 earlier on the list, um, without a disability are working. Now the question for you guys, is that a big gap to you? It's huge, okay? We've got some work to do. And then when you look at the state of Florida, 39.1% of individuals with disabilities are working. Is that a large group to you? No, not really, it's low. And 77.7% .7 without disabilities are working. So we can look at the huge gap. And you know what some of it is, we talked earlier, a lot of it is fear. A lot of people are afraid to really step out into the unknown. And that's why we're doing trainings like this to say, it's time to step out into the unknown. It's time for us to encourage and push people and let them know that they can work and not lose benefits. So when we look at the national level, um, at the national level, 41% employment difference between the two groups. State level, 43.3 difference in between the uh, two groups. Now, when it's something that I want to encourage you guys to do, how many of you are already connected with APD? Let me see your hands. If you're a family member, you're connected. How many of you, your family member, and you're not connected with APD? Can I see your hands? If there is a possibility that an individual, whether it be yourself or one of your family members, may possibly qualify for services, make sure that you connect with APD as soon as possible. And with that being said, you can apply with an online application. Um, you can go to our website, apdcares.org, and it shows you where the application can be found. Um, you can also contact your local APD office and fill out an application. Um, and you have to have documentation of the developmental disability, and it can include, but it's not limited to, the school records, testing, and medical records, okay? So with the criteria that I listed earlier, make sure that you get connected because there are some services out there. I know many are saying that we have the wait list, but something to keep in mind um, concerning the wait list, we do have some funding and employment for those that are on the wait list, and I'm gonna share that with you guys too, okay? One thing that I've found too, by talk, in talking to a lot of employees, do you know that they say the most important thing to them is for people to have soft skills that are working. So I began to look, I began to look and I said, you know, if they're looking for individuals with soft skills, then maybe that's something that we need to work on a little bit more, right? So would you say soft skills are kind of like social skills, yeah? Social skills and being able to communicate, so some things that we can work on is maybe communication, making more eye contact, um, being relatable a little bit, just working in some areas along those lines. So one thing we found, networking. So being able to reach out to people beyond the ones that you know, okay? And engage with new employers. That's something that I've always done over the years and my family tend um, to laugh at me. We'll go out to dinner, it can be a Sunday or Friday night, and while we're at dinner, I'm developing, looking for jobs to see what's available. Even if I'm in a different city, and I'll say I'm in Orlando, we went downtown to, is it Donnie Wahlberg's restaurant? Is it Wahlberg's? Wahlberg. Who's from Orlando? Am I saying that right? Wahlberg. They didn't tell you what happened. Um, I think this was in December of 2016, or late, no, um, late November, but December, I think. Um, my, um, my employee, my boss and I went in, we had dinner that night, I'm like, hmm, this would be a pretty cool place to work. They were putting up Christmas decoration, and I saw a lady, she was 
writing things on the wall. I didn't know who she was because she was working as if she was one of the workers. Make a long story short, the waiter says, oh, that's the owner. She owns 11 wall burgers. Are y'all with me? I'm like, well, can we meet her? Am I making sense? So we've got to reach out to people that we don't know, even out of our comfort zones, to make sure that we make a connection. Guess what she said? I'd love to hire people. So if we'll reach out, I think that would be one great thing. Then you have to have enthusiasm. What do I mean about enthusiasm? Be excited about the job, being able to express why you would be a good employee. So when we're working with people and providing supports, these are things that a job coach should do. Make sure that they work with that person so that they're relatable and they're excited about the job that they're applying for. How many of you have applied for a job and you went in da 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 bland? Did you get the job? You're like, I can't that interview. That didn't go over too well, right? And you can kind of tell, like, I didn't do too well on that one. And then another thing, professionalism. All of us included, make sure that the, your resume is dressed to impress, okay? And tailored for the job. That's something that you have to learn. Any of us that are in here, if you are applying for a job, if you're working with people with disabilities and you're a job coach, make sure that that resume looks like what they're asking for. So to put it plainly to you, whatever you need, I got it. Make sense? I can do it. Whatever you're asking for, I can do it. I can provide it. And my resume shows that I can do it, right? So make sure that it's tailor-made and dress appropriately for work. We take that for granted, but a lot of people don't. How many of you have seen that? To where people want too appropriate for work. So if we could push with you know dressing professionally. And some of you may say, well, such and such may not be able to afford. Guess what? There are so many different programs that will literally give away professional clothing. Whether it be a ministry or whether it be a community resource center of some type, they will give business attire and help out. So that's something else that we need to um, take in, um, um, and look at as well. Communication skills. Learn how and when to share concerns in the workplace and to become a self-advocate for yourself. So even though a job coach is there, be able to relate and say, I need this, I need that, or that. Am I making sense? Remember, employers have to provide accommodations when you ask for them. If you don't ask for a special accommodation, you don't get it. And it's not the employer's responsibility. Why? Because you didn't ask for it. Make sense? And lastly, teamwork. Successful businesses rely on team players and those who are able to work independently. So I think that if we prepare people, I think we will prepare them to keep a job, not lose a job. And that is those who are um, interested in job coaching and providing services. One of the most great things that I can think of, you guys, these are some individuals from the Northwest region when I worked as an employment liaison Employment in the 21st century, this could be you. Do y'all see these three candidates? The first guy, Philip, awesome graphics designer, does some, some great graphics work, interested in contracting out to do as such, works at AMC Theaters. Cameron Northrup, Northrup is a licensed esthetician, okay? The first with Down syndrome at Pensacola State College to be certified as a uh, licensed esthetician. And then you have Graham Glover working at Publix. So I say that the sky is the limit and people can work. And sometimes all they need is a little push and they need supports. What do I mean by supports? Like a job coach, and many of you are a supportive employment coach to help them out. Now, it says 21st century employers are hiring and are you ready to work? They are desperately in need of hard workers and they're actually, employers are saying that they have a shortage of qualified workers. So it's awesome if we can diversify the in industry. How many of you, we look so much and we look um, sometimes at stereotypical positions. Am I making sense when I say that? I think it's time to go outside of the box and develop and even family members you alike to look for jobs that maybe nobody has honed in on. And what I mean by that? Many would say, oh, air conditioning is a hard job. But get, being an assistant, even, with someone in air conditioning, people who do air conditioning work, they make money. I know I have a family member that owns his own business. And guess what? In the summer, 
It's extremely hot, and when people's air goes out, they pay thousands of dollars to get it repaired, and my brother-in-law does it. And that's just a little side job, but he has his own business. And then in the winter, it gets what? Extremely cold. You think people are gonna go out of um, being warm in Atlanta where it gets very cold? So thousands of dollars to get their heating done as well. So just looking into different areas. Now, do you have a resume and a cover letter? That's something to look at. Resume and cover letter. I, I wouldn't even apply without both. Most times online, they're asking for both anyway. Okay, have you applied for jobs? Have you practiced your interviewing techniques? I made some very bad decisions as a young coach, and what I mean young, not in age, but being new on a job. There are so many things that I learned and kind of had to fix to make sure that it never happened again, making sure that the individual is ready for the interview. Don't ever um, push for someone to go in and they're not prepared. You don't know about the company, don't rush to go in. Um, are you networking in the community? Um, whether you're a support coordinator, family member, or you may be the person yourself. Network in the community. So there are so many positions that will come, um, um, come up and become available for people with disabilities just because you're in an environment. You're able to get a job. How many of you in here, and I want to see your hands, you've been able to get a job by word of mouth? That's several of you. I'll put my hand up too. See, in you. So we've all been able to get a job by word of mouth, and it was probably because of a skill that you had or skill set, and people may have been impressed with you, and you were able to get a job. So networking in the community, being involved is so important. Identify companies that are hiring by attending job fairs. I can't say that enough. Here in Orlando alone, how many of you, are, are all of you from Orlando, this area? No, wherever you're from, make sure that you connect with your career source center. They give tons of job fairs throughout the year, and that alone will cause you to get a job. That alone, I know that for a fact. Normally what I do, um, we do what we call student mock interviews, okay? And we're gonna really push for those statewide this year. We do student mock interviews, and, and what I would do is go to the um, job fair as a career source. Do I need a job? No but I would go with my business cards and stand in the long line with those that are looking for jobs and shake hands with the employer. And what literally what I would do is get a contact and, and network with them. And they would literally come out and participate in student mock interviews that APD would host. Am I making sense? Do you know at the end of a lot of those interviews, they were offering a lot of the individual's jobs. I like such and such and such, and I would like to hire them. Make sense? So there are many different avenues that we can really tap into that would work. Um, so with this being said, this is one of the mock interviews that we did. And what we normally do is do the mock interviews workshops, help students obtain um, competitive employment, um, an income, at least minimum wage, and sometimes higher while they're attending school. We push students um, on the APD waiting list, make sure that they're connected with a job coach before they transition from high school. So what we're doing is connecting students and schools with what? Employers. So we team up with the school system. Needless to say, it's not just them that we're teaming up. We're also teaming up with individuals um, that are older as well. Say if they're in their 30s or 40s and 50s and they're interested in, in employment, we'll help as well. What you guys see is a diagram of how um, APD is split up. And if you notice, you've got your north, um, west over here in blue, northeast, right? These are some of your areas, central, sun coast, southeast, and southern. So we're split into six different regions, and what we do is team up with schools statewide. And let me tell you what we're doing. We're really in contact with the district extended programs throughout the state of Florida. Those are your students that are between the ages of 18 to 22, and normally what our goal is to ensure that they are not sitting on their couch, okay? That they're not sitting on the couch once they turn 22. So we try to um, link them up with our program. And we have a program called the Employment Enhancement Plan Project. And I mentioned this to some of y'all earlier. Now listen, how many of you have heard of the EEP? Can I see your hands? One, two, just three? EEP. Oh. EEP. Be good, Lord. Let me mention it to you. The Employment Enhancement Plan Project, plan program, started in 2013. 
Governor Scott and the legislature, all of them voted and gave APD $500,000 statewide, remember that? To help individuals on the wait list. Now many would say, oh, that's not fair. Yes, it is. Why is it fair? Because individuals on the wait list get nothing, right? Those on waiver have a budget, but on wait list, they have nothing. Yes, ma'am. And anybody, no matter what, um challenges they have deserve an equal chance. Thank you, I love that. Did you hear what she just said? She said anybody, um, no matter what challenge, or I'm gonna use a better word, no matter what the disability is, we don't even look at that. We want to know what is your ability. So I won't even say, so in other words, hey, you can do it. Let's give a person an opportunity to work. Even with parents, you may say, well, he or she can't do. One thing that I have found, when they leave home, you guys, they mature quickly when they walk out the door. Mm -hmm. Things that families say they can't do, I've seen them do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're afraid, uh, could have fooled me. When they were with me, they didn't display or demonstrate that. So I think we need to give everybody an opportunity. You won't know until you try, right? Mm -hmm. So with this program, they started out giving us 500,000, okay? The second year, they gave us a million. Third year, we got 500,000. Guess what? This year, we have how much? $750,000, okay, statewide in every region. And basically, what this money is used for, okay, is to help individuals 18 or older get a job that are on the wait list, okay? Um, also, uh, if they're inter they have to be interested in having a job, and we said that they have to be on the wait list, we will allow them to also um, be able to um, intern at different companies. I had a young man um, who wanted a job, he was getting SSI, been on the wait list for several years, had gotten into a little bit of trouble. I said, hey, let's try out um, the Palanza, a, a restaurant, a bistro. Let's, let's look into it and um, see if they'll um, allow you to do an internship. Met with the owner of the company, it was family owned. He said, okay, we'll do the internship, I explained. He, if he's able to intern with you guys, okay, and this is how you approach it, if he's able to intern with you, um, um, is two weeks good for you? Because in my head, in my thinking, I'm like, Ugh. if we put him at four weeks, you know, sometimes people would be of the mindset, I'm not gonna hire him, but I'll have free labor for four weeks. So my thing is, within two weeks, you should be able to tell if somebody, if you like them or not. Don't y'all think? You can tell if they're a good worker. Okay, we'll start them with dishwashing. In my head, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm trying not to do just stereotypical, but stay with me. They had him washing dishes for two weeks, but they were short with the chef, so he started assisting the chef for those two weeks as he was washing dishes. They hired him after the two weeks I think at 8.50 maybe, or nine, I cannot remember, maybe 8.50. And this was, remember like in 2013. Guys, listen to this, they hired him as a dishwasher. I went back up to check on him. Now I'm not his job coach, remember I'm at the APD office, but uh, you know, sometimes we'll jump in and kind of help develop in the city if we're kind of connected. We went to check on him. He said, oh, I have him as the assistant chef. I was like, really? So I would go in the back and, for me, I told one of you guys, I can't remember, I often, okay, patronize places that hire people with disabilities. So even though, in my opinion, Palanza's coffee is a little bit expensive, very good, by the way, if you ever come to Pensacola, I go and buy coffee, and I said, well, can I go and check on such and such? They let me in the back. He's the chef. <laughs> Do y'all hear me? Yeah. He's the chef. I went back again for more coffee. What's your name? What is your name? You. James Torres. Oh, excuse me. Oh, ask James. Me excuse me. Ask me again, please. Okay, James Torres. Okay, ask me again, please. I got you. Oh, ask me again, please. James Torres. Let me know. Ask me. Okay. Ask him his name. So, what is your name? Kenneth James Torres. Kenneth. Thank you. I got you. Thank you so much, Kenneth. So, what they did, they hired um, his family. They hired friends. Why do you think they hired all of these people? Because of his work ethic. Because, and he had a little slight problem, stopped working there, they called him back, we need you. Hired him again. Am I making sense? So you're standing before someone who has seen time and time again 
people literally working and being successful at doing it and people with disabilities getting SSI and they're still able to work and keep a job with success. So internship brings successful employment outcomes, job development brings successful outcomes, and many times student mock interviews bring successful outcomes. So at APD, that's what we're doing. We're striving to push to help people work, people that really want to work, okay? So with the EEP, our highest priority will be with students transitioning from high school, okay? to begin working in competitive employment. We don't double dip with vocational rehabilitation. If they are with VR, the person is involved with them, then we'll come on the back end and provide services and fund their supported employment. Make sense? Why do we do that? We want to make sure that there's no gap and that they have follow along services to do what? To continue being able to maintain employment. Does that sound good to you guys? Sure, and and you can't, it's a win-win. It literally is a win-win um, the funds are non-recurring with the EEP. We have optimistic projections for additional funds for future fiscal years. So we're in 2017 and it started in 2013. It looks good, right? So we have 750 this year. Um, services will be provided by APD supported employment providers only, okay? And we talked about what's included. Sometimes we help with transportation. The goal is really to get a person linked, like maybe with the bus system, with the supports that you have. You really should link. And I know in some areas a rule, and it's kind of tough. So um, uh, many of the um, supported employment staff, you know, they have challenges, but we can make those things work. So with the paid internship, um, with the program EEP funding, we pay for it. That person interns, APD pays them. Got it? And then the job coach negotiates with the business or the employer to determine whether or not they're willing to hire them. Thank you so much. And it is a pleasure meeting you too, Jason. Oh, you are okay. You're good. You're very good. And thank you. I love your name, by the way. Yes. So participation in EEP does not affect um, individuals that are on the waiting list. And the project is specific to employment. So, just some quick little things, helpful tips um, to maintain Social Security benefits. Stress the importance of individuals um, 18 years and older having a shelter obligation of what we talked about earlier in one of the other trainings. Because if the person 18 years or older, if they've got that shelter obligation, then what would they be able to do? They'll be able to get the top amount of um, income that's moving forward. Also, I want to talk with you, I'm gonna skip over to the ABLE Act. Just, um, and I don't know if many of you have talked, but how many of you have been to the ABLE Act table? Anybody? ABLE United? Make sure that you stop by their table because it's extremely helpful. Um, with individuals that may need to put money aside, they can put up to $100,000 um, in the account to help with quality of life, exceptional program. I talked to someone earlier about a special needs trust. Do a little bit of research on that as well. Um, if money needs to be put into an account, um, individuals now are able to write their own special needs trust. They don't have to pay thousands of dollars to a lawyer. That's been a big change that happened um, in just December alone. Here's a contact list of all of our regions for supported employment. We're going to make sure that the slide is available to you. If you are a part of APD on the waiting list or waiver, you're interested in supported employment, be sure to contact us and let us know. And we've given you a resource list as well that you guys can look into when we email um, the PowerPoint to you for help. And my contact number and my supervisor, Megan Murray's contact as well, is on the um, PowerPoint as well. Do you guys have any questions for me concerning the Employment Enhancement Plan? I'm hoping that you will spread the word about the Employment Enhancement Plan. Um, we have had, you guys, 435 successful outcomes with the Employment Enhancement Plan. What does that entail? Jobs, new employment, maintaining employment, internships, and things of that nature. So our goal is to make sure, starting July 1st, 2017, if you know of individuals that are on the wait list and interested in waiting, working, let us know so that we can get them started in all of the regions and we will pay for it, okay? 
And if you guys don't have any questions for me, I would like to say thank you for coming and definitely get involved and spread the word about the Employment Enhancement Plan in your region. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Trina. Thank you very much. We like your name. I like you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Huh? I got 30 minutes. Yeah. I do. Oh, that's rock and roll. I want to go back. So my next question to um, a lot of you um, regarding the EEP, in your area, have any of you been involved in the EEP in your region? Who's raising? Nobody? None of y'all have been involved in the EEP? Wow. No. If you're on the waiver, let me mention one more quick thing too regarding those that are on the waiver. If you are on the waiver with supported employment, okay, and say you refer to VR in supported employment, and VR may say that you say you don't qualify for VR. Has anyone ever received a letter like that? You guys do know that APD will pick up the funding if you provide a letter showing that they are not, the VR has said that they are not eligible, okay? And another thing I want to ask y'all with interaction, how many of you, what are some of the trends that you're seeing maybe in your region that, um, that are concerns for you in supported employment? What are some concerns? VR. What do you mean when you say VR? They're, 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 they're terrible. Sorry, they are not, they're not an effective tool to multiply. Sorry, they, they, they're not. It's, it's a process we take because we have to do it, but when it's all said and done, you get nothing out of it. I basically just tell them, get the letter. Yeah. yeah. And I'm speaking, and that's coming What area are you from? No, what's that? Where's tell them to get the letter so that we can get the services. I, what what area are you from? Uh, I work in... Northeast and Central. Okay, and we're so yeah. it is a statewide problem. Yeah. VR will tell you something different. You go to their presentations and they're all about the most significantly challenged and it's it's a clock. And and I and I have that view coming from both as a provider and a mother whose child received VR. So I think when my daughter received VR, we maybe saw they maybe follow through one time with a few things. We and I we changed people cons consistently, over and over and over. We changed. We requested new people, and, and it was the same thing don't want to do over anything. and over. I'll even tell you, that I've been a coordinator in the thing. area for 20 years, and I've probably out of everybody that's been referred to our agency or that I've dealt with, we've probably had one successful. So last, I can give you an example. Last yeah. summer, they sent out an ask, a, a, a mass email saying that um, for anybody that was in school, over the summer months, they were going to be doing this project. Get as many people signed up through VR, because you had to go through VR in order to participate. I called all of the individuals that I worked with that were in that age frame, encouraged all the families to go through the process. They did the paperwork, they did the assessments, they did the, the psych exams, the whole nine yards. All you can be told, oh, no, we lost, we don't have the funding that we thought we did, so we're not going to go through with this. And so that, in the parents, that left a bad taste in the parents' mouth to begin with. And then they started getting the letter saying, we can't help you once they got their psych exams back. So they all have letters now saying, you know, well, we can't help you with our services. And these are kids that are still in school. Okay, these, these are recent cases that you're talking oh, yeah. about? I, I would say, and I guess my experience has been a little bit different, okay? And, and the reason why I say that, because, and, and the goal statewide, you guys, and I know situations do occur, so my heart goes out in listening to you, and, and we will address it. But w what I have come to find, I have seen several get employed through VR. And I think different areas are different. Makes sense? It does happen, yeah. but for the majority, that's not been the experience. Okay. So what I will definitely do is we'll bring it to the table because we have been teaming up with VR um, in supported employment as a team, even though we're two separate entities. Um, as a team, we have kind of been teaming up to try and kind of tweak some things and get some things situated. So I will definitely, um, and you, what area are you from? We're from Coast Okay. Lake 
Lee County. So Are there any successes that y'all have seen? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not me. I'd say out of every 50 people that yeah. we refunded, and there may be one or two. That and that's just not that's not effective. Fun. One out of 50. No, it's not. Months. It's not. And it's been, it's very challenging even for the one or two that actually achieve employment. It's very challenging. And that's her not personal experience. Consistent. I haven't had any. Okay. None. And I've been in this field for 20 years. Yeah, I have too, and I've never had a person. Not like one. Never. Judy, what's your, where, where's your area? Uh, mostly northeast. But, okay. okay. We haven't gotten to that point yet, okay. but I will say I've been very impressed with our VR counselor. Uh -huh. uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because I would have to say for me, um, in, in working with them, I've seen where they've been extremely cooperative and there's been a lot of communication and there's been a lot of jobs too that I have seen with success too. Well. For them you guys, hold just a second. Ladies, hold just a second. You want to I think in your area? They're in, please listen. This is um, in Northeast, I'm in Northwest, excuse me. I have seen to where a lot of people have gotten jobs. I have. And I think it's too with communication and all of us working together as a team and meeting up. Kind of. So I think it can vary from region to region or area to area. So any other concerns? You know, one of the other things that really concerns me is that when, and, it, and I don't know where this would fall, okay, but when I have guys that are looking for jobs and everything, they end up at Publix. It's always the same place. It's always the same thing. And that's what it's actually thinking outside the box and looking at like the internship or anything like that. And it's. Now, I, I can say this with APD. We've been doing some internships. We have. Okay. And I'll say this. And, and you're, you're right. And, and on the screen, if you notice, I said diversify the workforce. Mm -hmm. it, it is going to take, and not just, listen to me carefully, the job coach not just the job coach, it is also, I, I believe, the responsibility of the person that's being served to look for a job, if you look at our brochure, on this brochure, and it's also the responsibility, like if a support coordinator may know of something that's mm -hmm. available. I'm a firm believer it takes a team effort. Now, let's speak on the waiver side because I know some of you are waiver. Something that I found successful as a job coach is when we did, whether it was person-centered meetings or if I met for the support plan, but the support, the waiver support coordinator would include the job coach, supported living. I mean, everybody that was a part of that person's life sat in on the meeting. And I think that it's very important that we all come to the table to add some things and work as a team. And for that coach to communicate with the families and not only the family, but other supports and for nobody to try and walk on each other's toes, but to come together knitted as a team to make it work. Do y'all agree? Oh, and I think sometimes that doesn't happen as it should. And, and the worst thing about it, I, and when I always do trainings, when the ball is dropped, who doesn't benefit from it? The individual loses out. So I think those are some of the things that we need to kind of address. Those are some of the things that we need to look at and come back to the table and say, you know, uh, maybe we should get a staffing and get everybody um, involved. And look at this, and I'll show you right here. Um, job coach responsibilities, and then, uh, oh, maybe it's on the back. Supported employment participant responsibilities. It says actively participate in, it, participate in supported employment activities. Be open and realistic about the type of work you're interested in. I'll give you a prime example. If someone tells me I want to be a pilot, okay? We know that a pilot, what, they've got to have a pilot's license, right? And sometimes a four-year degree, massive training, flight hours, and this person's reading may not, they may not read that well. But as a great job coach, what should you do? How would you think outside of the box for a person that says that they want to be a pilot? Where are you going to place them? Say it what again. What about being a pilot that appeals to you and then try to get them as close to that as you can? Okay, give them an example of what you would do. Y'all might be a here. Maybe a job at the airport. Maybe a job at the Exactly. A job at the airport, right? Or at a training flight place, right? Or it could just be the uniform. So anywhere that I can wear a uniform that, that makes me look like I'm a pilot. 
or if you're on a Navy base or some military base, something work, working around airplanes would be my first thing for that person because that's what they desire to do. Oh, I would like to be a nurse. Same thing. What am I going to do? They're going to get as close to a hospital as possible. So to address what you're saying, I think it's a matter of us, and you know, we have discovery too. Looking at, hanging out with somebody with intent of finding out about them through observation, right? And observing them in their natural environment to see what they like. What is their interest? I think when we do that as a whole, not just with people with disabilities, but in general, you learn much more about people and you're able to help them more. But if I don't know you, I can't help you, right? If there's no understanding, none of us can help each other. So I think that's the issue. And listening with you guys about your, um, with VR, it's like, you know, some doors need to be open and we'll work on some things too, okay? And the other thing that I've experienced with VR in the past when people have obtained employment to be able to get to those benchmarks, um, they don't necessarily listen to what the individual is saying that their desired employment is. Um, for example, I mean, one lady that I work with that said she did not want to work at McDonald's. She never she put her band in McDonald's. I agree with you. You on the very first day, mm -hmm. she didn't go. Mm -hmm. The coach called me up and said, "Well, she's done it. She didn't show up." She told you she didn't want to work that. Mm -hmm. So what did you think was going to happen? Mm -hmm. And then that agency, it was a vendor of VR, they dropped her. But the reason that they went to McDonald's is because they, they, had, had, a connection. they had a very good connection mm -hmm. with the manager and mm -hmm. they knew they could reach that much more. And let me tell you, what I've come to find, and this is relatable to all of us, if I work mm -hmm. in a job that I like, I'm going to do what? Keep it. And you're going to succeed. And I will succeed. And be a, a benefit, right, to the company. Benefit the company in many ways, right, because of my work ethic. But now, if I have a job that I hate, I think not only will that person suffer, but so will that company suffer, correct? So I think the best thing to do in having successful outcomes, help people get jobs that they like. Help people get jobs that they desire. So, and, and like the flight, okay? Person may never be a pilot, but I'm gonna sure put them around some pilots, okay? Somehow, somewhere, we're gonna put them around pilots. And I think when we begin to have compassion and passion like that, it shows them what we do, plain and simple. So somebody might be able to work at Publix, and that's what they want. And now, I love Publix, by the way. Oh, I yeah. do, I they do. are amazing, okay? But I understand what you're saying. Everybody doesn't don't want to work at Publix. Is there a program um, like the EEP for children that are under 18. Now, not an APD, but I will say VR has the WIOA program, W-I-O-A, okay? And they work with a lot of the uh, students that have an IEP in the school system, and they have different training programs, and they have millions of dollars available for that particular program. And a lot of it is training, um, and there is some funding to where they can get jobs as well. So we have this program, VR has we OWA. It's a win-win on both ends. It's just that we won't tap into anyone that's with VR until they've completed services with them and then they'll transition to APD, if they qualify for APD. Make sense? Any questions? I'm hearing your concerns and I love them because I think the best way for us to be able to make some changes and to get some things done is to talk about it. Um, within your regions. Um, yes. I guess I have a question about, you're talking about the support coordinators. Mm -hmm. Like with mine, I mean, she files with Aka every six months for our PC services and she'll get all the paperwork filled out and she mm -hmm. submits that. And there's a couple of forms that we have to sign a couple of times a year. And once a year she has to come over to the house and see him and stuff. But that's Y'all see more than once a year. CDC is a minimum of twice. Is her okay, CDC? Is twice. that what it yes. is? Oh, she's CDC. CDC. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Still. She should be available to you when you need her, though, Absolutely. not just according but to I mean, whatever the schedule and, is. But that's, I guess maybe, I don't know. Is there anything else that she should be doing? No, she, she should sounds be like listening she's to you and being a cheerleader. Like, you, know, you get a phone call every month asking yeah. if you need anything from us. 
Get a new coordinator. So you have the option, please listen carefully, you guys, and I won't hold you long. You guys have an option to choose whomever you want, parents, family members. The, the person has the option to hire a coach and fire a job coach, whether it's supported employment, supported living, support coordination, it is your choice to choose. So if you're not happy with services, you can go to someone else and choose someone else. That is your choice. And that's straight APD policy for you to choose whomever you desire that you think will work well with you um, and whatever, and all of your needs and needing the supports that you need. Make sense? And we're support coordinators, so we're telling you. Yeah, and you don't, you don't even have to, to owe, you don't owe us an explanation. <laughs> right. You can just call the district, get the form, and pick somebody else, and we'll get a thing in the in the over the fact, just ask you questions know. and, and tell, when you ask the questions, say what what is it that you can do for me, yeah. and then them. tell them what you want them to what do for you. Because and you don't want somebody that's just going to do the bare minimum. I mean, right. you want someone that loves the field that they're in, and they're going to you know do what's best for you, even if that means going above the bare minimum that they have to do. I mean, that's. Did they answer they work your question? for you. I'll talk to them. Just know that they do. You said the key word. What is your name? Felicia. Felicia is so correct. They work for you. Yeah. But let's work together. And if you're not happy, you are able to get another support coordinator. Make sense? Because you want to make sure that your family or loved one is receiving optimum care. So they, he has a choice to choose someone else. But if they're not calling you at least once a month and you're on CDC, you're going to get coordinated. Question, and I'm gonna let you go, okay? One more quick question. I bet you like you got a lot of questions. You got a question? Employment Enhancement Plan. Enhancement Plan. Yes, ma'am. Employment Enhancement Plan, EEP. One of the best things since sliced bread, in my opinion, okay? Question before you go, ladies and gentlemen. One thing that I have to ask you, have any of you, just throwing it out there, and because we want to hear, I want to hear from you. Have any of you helped with the job leads for people? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just how many? One, two, three. Yes. I'll say this to you: Please continue to do so. Please continue to work with the coach. Please continue to work with the people that you're serving. And it's not that you're infringing on their services and the provide um, and what they provide but make sure that you're working as a team and it's going to take a village to do it to make it work, okay? So, with that being said, I will um, send in some of your concerns um, that you've shared with me from your regions and we'll address those and continue to just do a great job with the people that you serve and promote, tell people about the EEP and the funding that's out there, because it's there. Thank you. Thank you.